Hello, and today's uh, Pomerantz Mentor series vignette is on variants, and specifically ulnar variants as it relates to the radius. Today's vignette is sponsored by ProScan MRI Education Foundation, and let's get right to it. Here are our three friends, Tom, Dick, and Harry. Now, Tom's the tall one. Harry and Dick are a little bit shorter. When we're looking at variants, we're looking at the proximal to distal protrusion of the non-styloidal portion of the radius and the ulna. And sometimes one sticks out a little more than the other. Sometimes this occurs with no consequence, especially when it's mild. Sometimes this occurs in only certain positions, supination, pronation, clenching of the fist, radial or ulnar deviation. This diagram illustrates the basic meaning of variance, which is, again, the proximal distal relationship of the non-styloidal portion of the ulna and the radius. There is a specific x-ray technique for measuring this variance, which we won't cover today because this is a talk about MR of the wrist. But when we look at this relationship on MR in a passive, neutral, non-extreme supination or pronation position, if there is a deviation between this interface and this interface of more than a centimeter in either direction, in other words, the ulna is protruding more than a centimeter distal, or it's more than a centimeter proximal to this surface, then we'll say that the patient has abnormal positive or negative variance posture. Now, why do we use the term posture? Because true variance has always been measured on x-ray with strict criteria and a strict position. And so if you start throwing around the word variance on an MR without adhering to those standards, it can confuse and upset high-level clinicians and hand surgeons. These abnormalities in variants can lead to various abutment or impingement syndromes like radial ulnar, ulnolunate, ulnotriquetral, and mid-carpal impingement syndromes. We'll see examples of these subsequently, but that's a story for another vignette. Let's look at the variance on MR. Neutral variance would be where the non-styloidal portion of the ulna aligns perfectly with the radius. In this example, we have negative ulnar variance posture because it's an MR, not an X-ray. On X-ray, we use a number as small as two millimeters in discrepancy between these two. On MR, we use a much bigger number, 8 to 10 millimeters, or as much as a centimeter. But more importantly, we look for the secondary signs of the various abutment and impingement syndromes that can result from these abnormalities and variants. If the discrepancy between these two on MR is 5 to 10 millimeters, we'll say that the patient has a tendency towards negative or positive variance posture. Extreme negative or extreme positive ulnar variance is associated with certain disease states, one of which is triangular fibrocartilage complex disease. Now when we look at positive variance, where the ulna is protruding distal to the radius, the patient is at risk for ulno, lunate, Compaction syndrome. There is a classification system described by Palmer known as the class two, either number two or Roman numeral two classification for degeneration of the TFCC. The progression includes positive variance with thinning of the TFC, then a tear lunato and ulnochondromalacia, 
lunatotriquetral ligament interruption and then advanced arthrosis. And actually, the chondromalacia often precedes or coincides with the presence of a triangulofibrocartilage tear. One may see subchondral cysts, erosions, and especially an OCD or osteochondral defect with inflammation and synovitis, all valuable, sensitive, yet indirect signs that the positive variance is having a negative effect. What about negative variance posture, where the ulnar is shorter than the non-styloidal portion of the radius? These patients are at risk for Keenbox disease, also known as lunato osteonecrosis. There is another entity, however, that has a high incidence in patients with negative ulnar variance posture, and that is capsulitis, stretching of the peripheral attachments, microinstability of the extensor carpi ulnaris and extensor carpi ulnaris disease and tears. Here's an example of negative ulnar variance posture. The non-styloidal ulna is more than a centimeter proximal to the non-styloidal radius. It's produced inflammation on the water-emphasized 3D gradient echo image and is starting to erode and aggravate the radius in what is a simple and early example of ulno-radial abutment syndrome due to severe negative ulnar variance. Here's the rest of our negative ulnar variance case, demonstrating the inflammation and fluid in the distal radial ulnar joint as a manifestation of abnormal friction in pronation and supination between these two joints. On the other hand, even though it's more subtle, the ulna is now distal to the non-styloidal radius. In other words, the patient has positive variance posture. This gets worse in various dynamic positions, but we already know that this seemingly mild positive variance is having a rather negative effect. It's producing an osteochondral defect along the ulnar aspect of the lunate, not to be confused with osteonecrosis, which occurs in the entire lunate or more on the radial side. This is one of the cardinal features and hallmarks of symptomatic positive ulnar variance and is sometimes and often only seen on the water emphasized or T1 fat emphasized MRI and not seen on the radiograph. Well that concludes our introduction to this concept of variance. In the next vignette we're going to tie it into the various common and then subsequently the uncommon abutment syndromes. You now know that variance is evaluated on x-ray, but on MR we can get a good feel for the variance posture by looking at some of the secondary signs alluded to. Thanks and have a great day.